Happy Lord's Day. So glad you're able to join us today and to hear God's word. Wish we were able to be together, but that'll happen soon. Want to let you know that we're getting things uh, prepared here in the church so that when we are able to come together, uh, we have a protocol set up and everything will be safe. And uh, we'll give you all that information later. But just uh, glad you're able to join us with uh, these webcasts. Also want to say congratulations to our graduates, those who have graduated from high school and from college this year. I want to say congratulations to you and uh, we're praying for you. Thank you so much for letting us know who you are and uh, what school you graduated from and such. Uh, it's been a real blessing. want to encourage you again to download the uh, Church Center app. It's uh, going to be a great resource. Uh, for the church. You can just go to the church website, uh, ChristCovenant.cc, and you can get all the information. Everything is right there on the, on the home page and the left-hand side says um, uh, Church Center, and it'll give you all the information that you need. It's really, really easy. Again, if, we, if you're not getting our weekly emails, that means that we don't have your email, and so we need for you to send us that. You can send it directly to me, Brian at ChristCovenant.cc, and I'll make sure that you get on the list. I want to encourage your continued support of the church and its ministries. Thank you so much for your faithfulness uh, to Christ's covenant, and we'll be able to function and to minister uh, during this time. Thank you so much. Your staff is working very hard on your behalf and to do the best we can to be able to minister to you. Also want to encourage you once again, as far as the Martha ministry, as we consider um, mercy, your deacons have done a great job and this Martha ministry is developed because in the gospels we see that Martha had a real ministry of serving. She loved to serve and many of the people uh, in the service industry have lost their jobs. Many of our sister churches, those members have lost their jobs and we're just trying to provide a little bit of relief for them. So can prayerfully consider that when it comes to your mercy giving as well. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 132 verses 7 and 8. Hear now the word of God as he calls us to worship this on his Lord's day. Let us go into his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for bringing us together today. And Lord, let us go into your dwelling place. Let us worship at your footstool. Let us abide in your resting place, for you are the ark of our strength. Lord, thank you for this time to being together. And again, we pray for our country and for the world. We pray for businesses that are really trying to do their best to stay open and stay afloat. We pray, Lord, for wisdom amongst us that we might really act and behave in a way that shows our care and our love for others and help our government officials, Lord, as they strive to get back and to really get things reopened. Lord, we pray that you'll give them wisdom. Give us all wisdom, Lord, so that we might honor you during this time. We ask you, Lord, to bless the preaching and, and the reading of your word. We ask you, Lord, that you would be glorified today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, last week we began a new series entitled Surviving Quarantine, and we, we learned that the word quarantine comes from two Latin words, which means 40 days. It's a practice of being quarantined that was started in the 14th century, where ships coming from infected ports would have to stay at anchor offshore and for 40 days before they were able to deliver their cargo to a shore that everyone on board was healthy. So we see, though, the Bible uses 40-day episodes several times within the Scriptures. And, and what we're doing is we're focusing in on seven of them. This is our second week as, as we enter our second week of our 40-day series. And we're really trying to focus in on God's Word that the Lord might teach us through these episodes how we might truly survive quarantine. 
Last week we looked at Noah and the ark and we discovered that even though God told Noah that it would rain for 40 days and 40 nights, that Noah and his family and the animals were all on the ark for 371 days. Again, that's really what you call being quarantined. Well, today we're going to look at two 40-day episodes in the life of Moses. The first is recorded in Exodus chapter 24, and the second one is recorded in Exodus chapter 34. And both of these 40-day episodes, well, they took place on Mount Sinai. Hear now the word of God, Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 through 18. Now the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commandments which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with Joshua his servant, and Moses went to the mountain of God. But the elders, he said, Wait here for us until we return to you. Behold, Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a legal matter, let him approach them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses from the midst of the mountain. Now to the eyes of the sons of Israel, the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Moses entered the midst of the cloud as he went up to the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Thanks be to God for his holy and inspired word. Hey, again, we want you to send in some videos or emails about positive experiences that you have had during this quarantine. You can send that again to the, uh, the contact information is on the website, ChristCovenant.cc. Just send us a short video or send us an email describing something positive that has come out of this quarantine time together. Now, chapter 24 begins with the Lord calling Moses to climb up Mount Sinai once again. Now, this time he is to bring Aaron, Aaron's son, and 70 elders from Israel with him. At the beginning of the chapter, as we see the Lord called Moses, that Moses built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and he set there 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. He offered a burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and he read the Book of the Covenant. And for all the people who were with him, they responded, we will do everything that the Lord said we will obey. Now, to ratify the covenant, Moses sprinkles the, the people with the blood of the sacrifice. And after the ceremony, the Lord commands Moses to continue up the mountain in order to receive the stone tablets which God had prepared. So we see that Moses and Joshua was with him, and Moses sends the others just back down to the foot of the mountain, and Joshua waits as Moses climbs the, to the top of Mount Sinai. And, and before reaching the very top, Moses waits for six days. And then on the seventh day on the top of the mountain, the Lord invites Moses to enter into the cloud, and the text reads that Moses stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Now, when you read the book of Exodus, what you'll see is that during this 40-day encounter on the mountain, God gives Moses much information, which includes the Ten Commandments, which God had written himself. And we see that Moses also receives complete information about how to build a tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the altar, and the specific garments that the priests are going to wear. Now, even though all this is wonderful information, it doesn't really help us much in surviving quarantine. But there are two points in the text that I read for you that I think will help us. The first point is that is God's invitation to Moses to join him 
on the mountain. And the second is Moses abiding in the glory of God. So let's look first at God's invitation. I love the first part of verse 12. Now the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and remain there. Notice that there's nothing intrusive or demanding about the Lord's invitation. The Lord's invitation is like a good friend inviting a close friend to come spend the weekend with him at his mountain cabin. Now Moses had gone up to the mountain several times before and I'm sure he welcomed another opportunity to be with the Lord. But I don't want you to miss the second part of the Lord's invitation. Remember, come up to me on the mountain and remain there. And remain there. Don't rush off. Stay a while. Linger a while. The, the, the Lord is inviting Moses to come and hang out. Now, Maybe using that type of language in describing the Lord's invitation is too casual for you. But I want to suggest that if that is your thought, then maybe you've made the Lord's invitation to come to Him too formal. Maybe you're looking at the Lord's invitation like a black tie affair instead of understanding that it's just two friends hanging out on the front porch, reminiscing about old times and sharing new stories. Brothers and sisters, I think what God is showing us is the way we survive quarantine is to realize that he invites us to spend quality time with him on the mountain. I think the Lord is teaching us the way we survive quarantine is to remain in his presence and not to be too quick to rush off. That we'd spend time with the Lord, studying and praying and seeing him in the pages of scriptures and praying with him. Now, the text reads... Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain, and the, the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it. Moses entered the midst of the cloud, and Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, verse 16 states, the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai. And this word rested means to abide. Or, or dwell. So basically, the Lord is inviting Moses to abide in his glory. Have you ever heard of the Shekinah glory of God? Now, the word Shekinah is actually not found in the Bible, but the idea is the word Shekinah means the one who dwells. Our God is the one who dwells with his people. And here we see the Lord invites Moses to come up on the mountain and remain there. Why? Because the Lord wants to dwell with Moses and he desires for Moses to dwell with him. The Lord is not going to rush off. And he desires that Moses would not rush off either. This reminds us that our God seeks to dwell with us. As I share with you a few weeks back, the Lord's invitation for us to abide in him, well, it's the centerpiece of God's redemptive plan. Remember, Christ is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Yes, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. You see, our God is the one who dwells with us. The manifestation of the Shekinah glory of God is at the heart of understanding God's desire for us 
to dwell in his presence. We see it in the earliest pages of Scripture when the Lord is walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and we see it in full demonstration when the Word becomes flesh dwelling among us and we beheld His glory. The truth, this truth, should invoke a continual thanksgiving in those who have been invited, like Moses, to shelter under the wings of the Almighty. No wonder Moses stayed for 40 days. The Lord probably had to kick him out. Wouldn't you just want to dwell there, be there? The thing I want you to understand is that this wasn't a forced quarantine. This was a welcomed quarantine. Welcomed by the Lord and welcomed by Moses. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling us to enter into the midst of the cloud to abide with him. The way we survive quarantine is to dwell in the Shekinah glory of God through Christ. So let's take every opportunity to enter into the midst of the cloud and not rush off. Now, unfortunately, at the foot of the mountain, the Israelites had Aaron build them a golden calf and they were committing idolatry. And when Moses and Joshua finally descended down the mountain after these 40 days, they saw what the people have done. And you know the story. Moses breaks the stone tablets. He destroys the golden calf and he disciplines the people. But when we come to chapter 34, the Lord said to Moses, Cut out for yourself two stone tablets like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you shattered. So be ready by morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on top of the mountain. So we see now Moses is to come alone. He was to cut the two stone tablets like the former ones. So Moses rose up early that morning. He went to Mount Sinai. He took the two tablets with him. And once he reached the top, then again, the Lord descended in a cloud, the Shekinah glory, and stood there with him and Moses called on the name of the Lord. So once again, Moses enters into the midst of the cloud of God's glory. The Lord stood there with him, the text tells us. And Moses called upon the name of the Lord. Can you only imagine that beautiful scene? Standing in the Shekinah glory of God. The Lord standing there with you and you calling upon his name. That's what the Lord desires. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. These are the words we need to hear today. The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. So the, the point is, is that when, when you start to think that the Lord doesn't care, we need to remind ourselves that the Lord is compassionate. When we start to think that we haven't lived up to the Lord's standards, we need to remind ourselves that the Lord is gracious. When we start to think that the Lord doesn't love us, we need to remind ourselves that the Lord abounds in loving kindness. The way we survive the quarantine is by constantly reminding ourselves of who God is. So he, that is Moses, was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did not eat bread or drink water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. 
So we see that once again, Moses is basking in the Shekinah glory of God for 40 days and 40 nights. But this time, he doesn't eat any bread or drink any water. This was a completely unique and supernatural fast. Now, it's definitely possible, yet remarkable, for someone to go without food for 40 days. But by any account, it is a miracle that someone can go without water for this long. This kind of fasting is never repeated or recommended in Scripture. One theologian wrote it like this. It is impossible to exaggerate the serpentous things suggested in this simple statement. Forty days and forty nights he did not eat bread or drink water. These words are powerful evidence of truth that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And maybe that's exactly what we need to hear during these times of unemployment and low income. Man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. After 40 days, Moses came down from Mount Sinai, carrying into two tablets. But Moses didn't know that his face radiated with the glory of God. The brilliance that shone from Moses' face well, it proved to the people that Moses had been in the glory of God, in the presence of God. You see, close communion with God, well, it physically affected Moses. His face had a shining appearance so that it was noticeable both to the leaders and to the people to the point where they were afraid to come close to him. Now, you would think that after such a remarkable fast of 40 days without bread or water that Moses' face would have looked pale, that he would have looked sickly. But apparently not. His face shone with the radiance of God's glory. Charles Spurgeon wrote, The face of Moses shone because he had long looked upon the face of God. Brothers and sisters, we should seek to look long upon the face of God to the point where there is a noticeable change in our lives, especially during these difficult times. Moses' face shone so brightly that he started to wear a veil when he spoke to the people. Now, when Moses was with the Lord, he would take the veil off, but when he was with the people, he would wear the veil. Now, it's easy to conclude that Moses wore a veil so people would not be afraid of him any longer. But the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians explains the real purpose for the veil was not to hide Moses' shining face, but to hide the diminishing glory of the Old Covenant, the diminishing glory of of the law. Now, the Old Covenant, the law, was great and it was glorious, but it looks pale in comparison to the New Covenant, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, well, he uses this whole episode to make a point, and it's basically this. If Moses' face shone so brightly after being 40 days and 40 nights, how much more should the faces of those who are in Christ shine for the glory of God? Paul continues to say, if, 
such things as if Moses' face shone so radiant after receiving the law, how much more should the faces of those who have received the Spirit radiate the glory of God? If Moses' face glowed after receiving tablets of stone, how much more should the faces of those who have received God's word written upon their hearts glow for the glory of God? Paul concludes this portion by challenging believers to be transformed from glory to glory as we gaze into the face of Christ. Abide in Christ. Now, these days, we all wear a mask when we go out into the public. What I've noticed is that these masks, well, they, they hide a, a lot of expressions and a lot of emotions. But I wanted to challenge you today not to allow the glory of God to diminish in your life. I want to challenge you today do not hide behind the mask. Let's honor the Lord's gracious invitation to come up to him on the mountain and remain there. Let's not be too quick to rush off to do our own thing. Moses had been with God and it showed and for us who are in Christ, when we really spend time with the Lord, studying, meditating, hearing Him from the pages of scriptures, praying to Him, it should show. It should show. Brothers and sisters, let's abide in the Shekinah glory of God through Christ. Let's gaze. Let's take time to gaze into the face of Christ with unveiled faces, allowing nothing to hinder people from seeing the glory of God in us. Let's behold the glory of the Lord and let's be transformed. And if we do, we will certainly survive the quarantine. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your divine presence that's been manifested to us completely, demonstrated to us completely through your Son. And Lord, we glory in Christ. Lord, we welcome your invitation to come and be with you. And Lord, by your Spirit, help us slow ourselves down to hang out with you, to really experience your glory. Lord, we come to you today and ask that you administer to our hearts in such a way that there would be noticeable change in us. We ask you, Lord, to work deep amongst us. Lord, we come to you during this special time asking for you to allow us to dwell in the midst of the Shekinah glory of God through Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Again, we want to say congratulations to the graduates. We're so proud of you. If there's any way or anything that I can do for you, I offer myself to you, just reach out to me. Again, all the contact information is found on the website, ChristCovenant.cc. If the leadership of the church can help you in any way, I know they stand ready to do that. But let's work together to abide in the glory of God during these days. Praying for you and hope you're praying for me and we will survive the quarantine. Receive now this blessing from God's word as we each go our own way. Hear now the word of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you 
and give you peace. And God's people say, amen. God bless.